morning. You know, every day that I used to go camping, there was always seemed to be a time in the morning when I would go and, oh, I don't know, long before dawn, head towards the horizon and try to find a high point where I could watch and see the first light of the new day come and gradually turn the darkness into possibly red skies or just lightning out there. Oh, as far as my eye could see because the horizon sometimes extended out farther than I knew where it was at. But it always seemed like just before dawn there was just a slight breeze that came along. And I always thought, God. You know, and just at sunset, you know, there's a, they say there's a twilight time. I look at sunset and it seems like every time that I do, right about the time that the sun just begins to go down over the horizon, it seems to be a blast or a, a quick shot of the breeze. And I used to think, God, the Holy Spirit, of course. And when I did, it was always a time when God seemed to confirm in me that he was, from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof, to be praised, and I thanked him for it. And those were wonderful times. And I don't get up so much before dawn anymore, and I don't travel to the horizon, and I don't look at the sun rising and lots of times I miss the sunset but you know God is still there he's still here he meets with us where we are when we are as we are because God is always merciful and kind he is long-suffering he is love and he personifies it in everything that he does <laughs> we may not understand it and I could spend hours explaining it and you might agree and you might not. But one thing we can agree on is that every day we can meet with God and today in daily light, let's meet with him. Let's see what the Lord would have to say. Because I know when I looked at the sunrise and I looked at the sunset and I thought about God, I know God was thinking about me because he said so. He rose and came to his father, but when he was great way off, his father saw him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the, high, as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. You have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Daddy. The spirit itself bears witness within our spirit that we are the children of God. You, who sometimes were far off, are made close by the blood of Christ. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Cool. <laughs> oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, but behold what the Lord has done in all these things. Amazing. Simply amazing. And we think we chose him. He chose us. Behold, I make all things new. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. 
Thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? When I really think about the fact that all things will be dissolved, when I consider that my flesh, this cup, coffee itself, will all be one day gone in a release, you could say, of atoms that God is holding together because scientists can't figure out why everything stays together. But when all of that is gone and we don't remember it no more, I think that knowing those things, we should change our pattern of living, that we should look forward to that time when nothing of this life is remembered because this is only the beginning for us. We go on to eternal life. We who are born again haven't been born again just to go sit in heaven on clouds and play silly harps or earn some wings, but rather God has caused us to be seated in heavenly places with him, meaning that we get to be with God in the universe. We get to be wherever Jesus is, following him. And it's not just a worship service that goes on for age to age to age to age to age to age, but it's also a learning experience where we get to know God, grow, and become more like God. Today, are you becoming like God? You can. You just started. <laughs>